So Paddy has uh, handed out all the meat that we dropped off to him earlier. Um, so we are going out potentially muntjac uh, or fallow prickets. We're on the estate where my pheasant shoot is. Um, past two and a half, three weeks, I've been trail feeding my pheasants now. Uh, so I'm getting quite a lot of deer come in on the feed rides and uh, hoovering up all the wheat and all the maize. So we're going to sneak down a few of those feed rides and see if we can catch a few of them out. Blast a click. So that's not happened before, except Paddy was on a, on a fallow bricket in the cover here, uh, about 50, 60 yards in the cover. Um, his broadside, her neck was in a nice little gap. Paddy said, neck shot, neck shot was on. Squeeze the trigger, click. So these blasts are rifles. <coughs> there. Their safety is their cocking mechanism. Um, and it's the blaster clicks become a bit of a thing. If you don't cock it correctly or you don't rack the rounding correctly, you uh, you get a click. But you saw me do that the truck right yeah. Yeah. No, I saw you I saw you. So your first that's my first. No, that's your second. Well, the first yeah. time was the very first shot on the target range when we zeroed it. That's the first time. I see it a lot guiding. A lot of people come with blazers. And yeah, I've probably seen it 10 or 15 times where it's not been either cocked correctly or loaded correctly. Whereby you don't push the bolt all the way forward so it doesn't set the trigger. It set the cocking mechanism. That's why I use a sour. Okay, follow. Amazing how. 
Yeah. Give her a hug. Fairly convinced. Good wax and not getting up. But let's just give her a set. Yeah. So, if you want a control population, which it does, yeah, you'll get one buck, so 17 does. What did you say? 198 on your. She was 195. Yeah, uh, successful start there. We, uh, we got a Munchak doe, you can see behind there, Paddy's just. Uh, going to do with Gralic and his inspection. Um, we we had a chance on, we got into a group of fallow, a bachelor group of fallow, um, picked out a fallow pricket within the group. Um, it, it tight in cover, but did give us a, an opportunity of a neck shot at about 60 yards. Paddy lined up on it, um, sort of talked through the shot, squeezed the trigger and click. Um, Paddy's using a blazer and there is a bit of a, a thing with the blazer click that if you do not cock it because their safety mechanism mechanism is the cocking mechanism um i'm sure so will know a bit more about it than i do because i'm not a blazer man i'm a sour man so um but they they often happens um blazer clicks so we had one of those fellow moved off um we tried to get back round hoping to bump into them but also working in a position where i knew we'd see some some munchak which we did we saw a, a uh, buck down in the corner in an unshootable position. We also saw a gang of fallow up on the far bank as well as a bit further around, uh, a couple of rows. Um, but we had a, a doe come out of the corner, grazed out into the stubble. Um, <coughs> I've got a, uh, this is where I feed the pheasant, so she's probably picking up bits of <coughs> bits of wheat and bits of maize. Um, but uh, 195 yards, great shot um, by Paddy. Yeah, square, in, square in the shoulders, dropped her, dropped her on the spot. So we're yeah, really, really happy with that. Um, <clears throat> like we were saying earlier on when we are at the gym, Paddy's, Paddy's relatively in time-wise, new to talking, but in experience, he's done a lot. Um, yeah, we're well, we're well in over 150 stalks, um, well over 100 successful stalks. And you know, some of those stalks shot multiple deer. So. Paddy uh, really knows what he's doing now and from the very first deer Paddy's always wanted us to do the Gralic um, as he's you know, he's eating everything pretty much everything that um, he stalks he's eating so he wants to see the whole process, process through which is great for, for a guy like me and mentoring Paddy someone that's so keen to to see the whole process and not just pull the trigger and do the dirty work as well which is fantastic so yeah I'll um, I better offer some assistance as this is a guided stock can't leave him to do all the work um but yeah thanks uh thanks again thanks for watching and uh see you again soon Hello and welcome to the shooting show. This week we're going to be taking the Pulsar F455 front add-on out for a bit of foxing. 
So this is the Pulsar F455S night vision front add-on. So when that's added onto the front of your day scope by means of a quick release system, which is a bayonet set up like that. So this piece, uh, the like a locking ring, fits on your scope and you'd leave that on your scope all the time. And then this unit simply slots in, turns to lock it in place. So as you can see, there's an infrared illuminator on the side of the unit. However, like most night vision units, this one will benefit massively from an aftermarket IR. The unit runs on a IPS7 battery pack, same as the Accolades, which lasts, well, I haven't run it out yet in a normal night's foxing, so you get plenty of life out of that. It's focused by the little knob on the front here. So the unit also records, however, because it's forward of the crosshairs on the scope, you won't actually see the crosshairs in the recorded footage. You'll also find that it won't be magnified as much as what you'd see through your scope. So one of the great things with this unit is it means you can use your standard day scope in a normal way. So in other words, you can dial in for elevation and windage still, and you can also use your illuminated reticle. It also doesn't affect your zero. Now, what you might find is sometimes with these units, I don't know quite how this works, but sometimes it will alter the point of impact very, very slightly. Um, but these units can be calibrated to just adjust them so that they, they match your point of aim. And once you've done that and you leave that locking ring on the scope, then you simply lock it in place and it'll just be bang on. So if you've got a variable magnification scope, you can still zoom in using this scope. However, what you will find is that much past probably eight, maybe 10 at a push, uh, any more magnification than that, and you are gonna get quite a pixelated image. Ideally, this scope works best on around about three to four times mag. The minimum base mag on this one's five. So it does mean that I do start to lose a little bit of the, the picture on the screen due to the higher magnification. Um, as I say also, you'll find that the more you zoom in, the more pixelated that image will become because essentially you've got a digital screen in front of the scope and you'll zoom in on that. So naturally, as you enlarge that picture, you're gonna see the, uh, the pixels that bit more. You'll see here that I've got a trigger cam set up on the back here. So the idea being that I'm hopefully gonna be able to get some footage through the scope of what you'll actually see when you're using this. So you will actually get the crosshairs in the, in the footage because I'm recording from the back of the scope. So I'm getting everything forward of that. So I thought I'd take this unit out this evening and put it to the test on the problem fox that we've got coming into the farmyard. We've got a fox that's been coming in across these fields here and uh, making its way straight for the farm pretty much every evening, about the same sort of time, about an hour after dark, something like that. And it's been harassing the ducks on the pond there. So the farmers just asked if I could um, have a look and see if I could sort that little problem out for them. So we pop back a bit later this evening, around about dusk and have a little sit out and see if we can sort that fox out. So I'm back down the farm again this evening and uh, I've got a nice spot uh, just on top of some bales which gives me a good view out across the field where uh, the fox has been coming in from. Um, it's also quite a good spot actually, you get a few foxes coming up and down the tree lines either side of this and up and down the driveway as well so uh, it's certainly a good spot to sit and wait. So hopefully before too long we uh, will see our fox coming in. So it's a lovely still evening this evening. Certainly much more pleasant sitting and waiting for a fox when it's like this and when it's absolutely hammering it down or blowing a gale. Still just about to see with the binoculars and that, so. It's not quite that dark yet, but 
can have nine mark coming early. It's always worth turning up at least an hour before you expect to see a fox. They're fairly predictable with their times when you regularly see one around, but uh, an hour either side of the expected time is a pretty good, pretty good window to to uh, get a chance of knocking one over. There goes the farmer taking the dog for a walk. Right, it's getting too dark to see now with the standard day scope, so I'm going to go over to the uh, F455. Um, the IR that comes with it, incidentally, you can take that off. Uh, like, like that, there we go. And there's a little bit of Picatinny rail on there, so if you want, you can add a, uh, a separate IR on there, like so. Um, alternatively, as I've done here, uh, I've got a little scope mount, which allows me to lock it on there. So it was a fox that just went along the hedge around the distance there. It's 380 metres away. But uh, I can't take a shot even if I uh, fancy having a crack at that because uh, there's a road immediately behind that. But uh, we need them in this field, ideally. But there's a good chance they'll come along the hedge row there and come through into this field. So we'll just keep our eyes peeled. So in the style of a true professional, I forgot to charge the trigger cam. So this footage is recorded directly from the unit itself. Hey! at 100 yards bang on excellent well I'm pretty confident that would have been the one where he's after because it was heading straight in towards the farm here brilliant well that worked really well because that was um I didn't even have the IR on for that, that was purely just uh, using the uh, ambient light. So that was good. Smack on, straight over. Happy days. So um, I've given it probably an hour now since that last fox came in. So uh, I think I'll call it a night and say that's job done. Right, let's go and have a look. That's one of this year's dog fox. That looks like a perfect candidate for a bit of a uh, duck harassing on the pond, so I reckon that's our one. Right, so that's where I always leave the foxes for the farmer, so he sees them when he comes into the yard, and uh, we should be pleased to see that one, so another good night. Thanks for watching.
If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.